Okay, a couple of people I'd like to mention. Would you welcome back Ben? Welcome, Ben. It's been a few, few years, hasn't it? Good to see you. And there's someone else who's sneaking around. William, welcome back, William. Thank you. And she's always here at the right time. Would you welcome Janet? My goodness, this is fantastic. And William, did you bring a poem for later? You did, okay. Uh, look, you've missed out on being a disciple, I'm afraid, because we were getting a bit uh, short of time, but uh, thank you anyway. We look forward to hearing from you later. Joy to the world is the name of the game. The joy of life, and what is the joy of life? We celebrate it different ways at different stages of our life. The different ages of mankind, when we're young, we just go crazy. Uh, middle age, we tend to settle down a bit. And at the end, the simple pleasures bring the joy. Very simple pleasures. What was that? <laughs> Where mainstream churches celebrate the birth of Jesus, we celebrate the birth of Christ in us. And as I said earlier, this can happen at any time. As a matter of fact, in the ordinary churches, there's a section in their communion book called Ordinary Time. Well, really, there's no such thing as ordinary time. Time is amazing. And look how fleetingly it goes by. And look how we waste it. Or is it wasting when you sit down one afternoon and you've got a book and it might be two o'clock and you look up and it's five o'clock? You know, the simple joys of life as we unfold in this wonderful way of living on earth, realizing that we are a spirit having a human experience. And we see Jesus as the great example, not the great exception, but what a wonderful example. And his teachings, they're timeless. They will never change, even if they go to the planet somewhere, another solar system. The same creator has made those. And we are using that energy. We are experiencing spirit in action according to our awareness of it. But don't let's get too carried away because we didn't invent that energy. There's still another step for us all to go. And while Jesus was teaching in Galilee, 500 years before that, Gautama Buddha in northern India was teaching the same spiritual truths and Confucius and Lao Tzu in China were doing the same thing. Mind you, dressed up in a different culture for different people at different times, but the basics are there, they never change. There's probably more and some of you may have a better um, idea of it, but we are surrounded and we have in us that inner Christ light. Jesus said, whatever I can do, you can do. And we can probably do it better. I know that sounds sacrilegious, but Jesus didn't have computers. They had to go on camels. And I suppose the luxe way would be on an elephant. And sort of, they had to go around the desert, or so we're told, and spread these teachings. They really would have had to have the joy of life and a strong inner conviction to do this. But with a leader like Jesus, it wouldn't have been too hard to do. The second main one is there is a law of spirit of God that responds to our faith in it. And here's the big one. It is done unto us as we believe. That is scary because when you look back, you know, we go back to grade one and grade two, and someone says, oh, you're slow at counting. You know, you're a slow runner. You can't do this. You can't do that. Isn't it terrible? That sort of goes in, into our psyche. But gradually, we get aware of it and think, get behind me, Satan. That's how we use that. And as we evolve, we have to be kinder to ourselves and think, well, look, I did that then. What a stupid thing to do. But it made us who we are now. I may have said to you, I met someone in my hometown 
And this old boy, he was probably, looks like a farmer. He was a bit of a rough dude. And he came in there and he said, g'day, mate. And so without even asking, there was a beer there waiting for me. I just thought, well, thank you, universe. <laughs> um, and we got chatting because we've just got a new piano in the pub, which is a bit of a trap for me. And uh, I've already been on their website and I've got 370 hits for playing. Uh, I forget what the song was. So I'm, I'm a star in Linton. <laughs> She now wants me, the owner wants me now to play a Christmas carol next week. So uh, I'll do that. Um, but this man said to me, he said, you know, I did some stupid things when I was young. And I thought, yeah, I thought about that. Now, here's a guy that didn't have any religious training or anything, but he was evolving. Life takes us to different stages where we are and we get this wisdom that comes through. But we have to be aware of it and this man was and he had some very spiritual qualities so it is done unto us as we believe and i wonder if that's what jesus wouldn't tell certain people in the book of thomas he's got his disciples there and him and thomas are talking and they're nattering on about something and he goes back to the other disciples does thomas and they say, what did he say? What did he say? What did he say? And Thomas said, if I told you, you would not leave me. we will be gnashing of teeth and all that. Who wants to know that we are responsible for our position here? You know, that someone else maybe do it. I'm this because of that person. And we're seeing this in some of the interesting documentaries that are being shown on Netflix at the moment. So it is our destiny to become the Christ. Joy is an inner knowing. It comes from living God's law and realizing the truth. And we're all surrounded inside and out by the love of spirit. And it's not always gentle. It can be impersonal, it can be tough, but it is still love. And I was looking in my garden and the ferns for some strange reason I had an epiphany. I was looking at the ferns that grow, and there's one there at the end, you know, just as they're about, about to open, they unfold. And I saw it, and I thought, my goodness, that is going to go and become a full-size leaf, whether it likes it or not. Not whether it believes in the nature spirits or anything, but it is his destiny, and same as ours. So regardless, we're all going to get there. In the Bible, in Galatians, it's St. Paul refers to the nine fruits of the Spirit. Sometimes I can remember them, sometimes I can't, but I'm not taking any chances this morning. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The first two fruits of the Spirit are love and joy, which we're celebrating. And in Matthew 7, verse 16, by their fruits shall ye know them. And that is so true. Now, the Christmas story is familiar to most of us, whether we're multicultural or not. We read of wise men setting out from the East on a journey to follow the appearance of a new star. The appearance of this star at this particular point in time was to them, the wise men, a fulfillment of a Zoroastrian prophecy about the arrival of a great deliverer. Tradition, not the Bible, gives the names of these wise men as Caspar, Malkiah, and Balthazar. But the gifts they brought to the Christ child are listed in the Bible. And Diane reminded us of those last week. But I'm just going to remind everyone again. Gold represents the richness of spirit. By the way, there were three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Gold representing the richness of spirit. They brought to the Christ child a consciousness of the omnipresence of substance. A lot of this is in the revealing word. 
and also the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, which everyone should have. We can change our mind and do what we like. We can shape substance. And there was a, a, a little brochure in the minister's office when I first went in there years ago, and it said, we tell God what to do. Isn't that awful? This is my Sunday school thing saying, sorry, God, I won't tell you what to do. But see, we're past the, the old man in the sky, whether we're naughty or nice. We shape this substance. And some of us still have a resistance to that. Frankincense is a fragrant gum resin, and it represents in us the transmutation of material consciousness into the spiritual. And thus the words, not my will, but thine will be done, become illuminated. We understand what they mean. And when we say my will, our ego is part of us, but our ego can have a life of its own. We know that inside, when we go into meditation, there is that spiritual part of us waiting for us to listen and learn. That's why we see when Jesus came down from the mountain, he rode on a donkey, which represents his animal nature. Now, he didn't get rid of the donkey, he controlled it. We don't want to lose our animal nature because it's part of our survival here, but we want to control it. How easy did we say, oh, look, I will have another sandwich. And Beverly's got a good one or two over there for us later. So we've got to control our appetites, control our instincts, control ourselves, our, our moods and you know, our passions. Just live life in a balanced way, not easy when we're at a certain age of life. So as in time gone by, wise men always seek the Christ. I suppose I should now say wise humans ever seek the Christ. Now, where do we seek it? Not in some far off place, Machu Picchu, the Himalayas, the pyramids, the um, El Camino, but we seek it in the greatest spiritual building in the universe, our body. What a creator has designed us. Aren't we magnificent creatures? We really are. And we go looking elsewhere for it, but it's inside. We travel the world for it. And as the Sufi says, it's, you can travel the world, but eventually you come back to yourself. But traveling the world is part of the journey too. Now, numerology. I've got to be careful here because we've got one of the world's top numerologists. <laughs> <laughs> The number three. Can you do anything on three? Gosh, Bill. Tell you what. Uh, go on. It's highly creative. And uh, if you look at a lot of artists and entertainers of three, they're born on the day of three, or the age of three, two and one, one and two. They like a joke very often. And they like well done I, I don't need to go any further but i will we've had three gifts three wise men and three names and it says here three is a symbol of completeness of process or state we can talk about that over a cup of tea Ernest Holmes writes, man is a threefold principle, spirit, body, and mind. In the Christian tradition, Father, Son, the Holy Ghost. In the Hindu, Vishnu, uh, Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva, and so on and so on. All these names for the Holy Trinity. Now, not everyone saw this star. King Herod didn't. Herod had heard about it, but it troubled him. Herod represents our ego. He was a king, same as Pharaoh. And he represents that part that doesn't want to let go of what is in its control. 
it can rule us if we don't eventually rule it. Herod doesn't want to change. He's got the good life. So why should he? But eventually he will. And we notice that the three wise men, when they found out about the Christ consciousness in Jesus, they went the other way. They left Herod behind to find his own journey. So this star of the east is an inner light. It's in us all. And sometimes we get a glimpse of it. And the most beautiful sights on earth are those that force us sometimes to see the unseen. St. Paul says what can be seen is temporary, but what cannot be seen is eternal. So we celebrate the joy in Christmas. So to sum up, joy is not dependent on something outside of ourselves. It is an inner quality waiting to be recognized and expressed. Joy is always there, even if we're down in the dumps and we're having a dark night of the soul, something inside us knows that we keep on going. This joy springs from the presence of the indwelling Christ in us. So at this time of giving and receiving gifts, what a tremendous gift awaits us for anyone who will accept the full implications of their own indwelling divinity and the joyful realization that Christmas is about the conscious awareness of us, the birth of Christ in us. And so it is. Thank you.